You're not only decked out like a Christmas tree, you're lit up like one. Isn't it a lovely day? I'm gonna tell your mother you've been dipping into the cooking sherry again. What? All I can say is them's what can handle it shouldn't touch the stuff. I can't agree with you more. Now, what does that mean? Rusty, don't stare at your Aunt Liz. I don't want you to see in that condition. She's not feeling well. Go upstairs, both of you. Go on, come on, come on. Gee, Aunt Liz, do you want to come up to my room and lie down? Oh, I'm not a bit tired. We'll see you later, Aunt Liz. Sorry you're plastered. <laughs> Very funny. Aunt Liz comes round looking more like a woman than a press agent. The only reason you can think of is that she's been hitting the bottle. You mean you haven't been drinking? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Somebody dropped a bird cage on your head. <laughs> Still see the feathers. <laughs> oh, come on now. What else besides a drink and a bump on the head can make a woman feel like a girl? A fella? <laughs> Give that man a box of Hershey bars and a ticket to next week's show. Hershey, you, you, you got a guy? A real man? Well, if he isn't, they're making imitations that look better than the original. <laughs> hey, you're not kidding. Of course not. Well, how about that? I, I can't get over it. You mean you can't get over the fact that somebody could fall for me? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't mean that at all. It's just that, well, I mean... I never took you for the, you know. I know, I never took myself for the type either. <laughs> Just goes to show how much you and I know about women. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, tell me about him. Well, who, who is he and what does he do? His name is Rod Fowler. He's a comedy writer. He's attractive, charming, talented, and stupid. <laughs> stupid? <laughs> Must be to fall for me. <laughs> and that's the way I intend to keep him. Oh, really, Danny, though, you know, when you've been without a family as long as I have, it's just wonderful to find somebody you feel you really belong to, you know? Well, take it easy now. Take it easy. After all, I haven't given my approval yet. I want to look this fellow over. How do I know he's good enough for you? <laughs> well, he's anxious to meet you, too. He is, huh? He sure is. He thinks you're the greatest performer in the business. He's good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> but kidding aside, I'd like to meet him. Why don't you bring him over tonight? That's just what I had planned. Well, how about that? I hear wedding bells already. When's the happy day? Oh, now, wait a minute. You're asking the $64,000 question. I haven't even had him in the isolation booth yet. <laughs> Bye, see you tonight. All right, honey. Hey, kids, guess what? We heard Aunt Liz has a boyfriend. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. Love has come to Aunt Liz. Hey, it may be a wedding any day now. In that case, I'll need some new things. Uh -huh. A dress, hat, shoes, maybe even gloves. Okay, we'll go shopping next week. I'll need some new things for the wedding all also. All right, all right, you'll get them. I'll need a new suit, shoes, a necktie, and a bike, a sled, a pair of skates. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> this is for a wedding. What's with a bike and a pair of skates and a sled? <laughs> when I go shopping, I don't fool around. <laughs> Sometimes wind blown, honeymooners at last alone, feeling far above par. Oh, how happy we are while I bring to you. And you bring to me true love, true love. On and on, it will always be true love, true love for you. A garden on high with nothing to do but 
but to give to you and to give to me. Love forever. Beautiful song, Dad. Isn't it, though? Hey, Benny, I've got an idea. When Liz and her boyfriend get here, later on in the evening, I'll sing this song for them, kind of to help matters a little bit, huh? What do you think? Benny? Yeah? I say, what do you think? What do I think? Yeah. I think there's nothing more disgusting than a kid who beats his elders at checkers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Well, you've got to get to bed now. Come on. Oh, come on, Daddy. Let me stay up and see Aunt Liz's boyfriend. Well, okay. You meet him, and then you go off to bed, all right? Okay. Oh, boy. I wonder what he's like. Oh, whatever he's like. As long as Liz is happy, I'm happy for her. She's a wonderful girl. You can say that again. When they made Liz, they threw away the mold. Threw <laughs> <laughs> away the mold? Daddy, that isn't the way you told it to me. <laughs> what isn't the way I told you what? That they make people in a mold. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh... Well, do they? You said it. It's your move. <laughs> You're raising the child. I check to the razor. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> Saved by the bell. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Rod, I want you to meet the folks. Uh... Terry Williams, Rod Fowler. Hello. Ben Lessie. Hello, Benny. Danny Williams. Hello, Danny. Nice to meet you. And Rusty. Hi, Rusty. How do you do? I hope you'll be very happy, and I hope you'll have ice cream at the wedding. All right, thanks oh. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Take him upstairs. Keep your hand in his mouth all the way up, huh? He's a cute kid. Yeah. Wish we had a dial on him, though, so we could turn off the sound and still see the picture. <laughs> turn off the sound and still see the... Hey, that's wonderful, Danny. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff you expect from the old master himself. <laughs> well, uh, suppose we take the pressure off the carpets and put it on the furniture, eh? <laughs> no, sit over there. You know, I can't believe that I am finally face to face with the great Danny Williams. Oh, well, well, we are. He's just a regular guy. He has indigestion. Pays his taxes, has more indigestion. <laughs> He's an ordinary guy. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't think he was so ordinary if you've been trying to see this guy for six months with your material and never got past the agent. Oh? You didn't tell me you were trying to get Danny to look at some of your material? Oh, didn't I? Well, you mustn't blame the agent after all. There's 101 full of trying to sell me something every day. If it wasn't for Jesse, I'd go out of my mind. Yeah, sure. Well, I know how it is. Let's, let's just forget about it, huh? Sure. Let's talk about you and Liz. We can discuss the material some other time. How about tomorrow? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but call me first, eh? Okay, I'll call you. You're gonna love this, Danny. I got a monologue that is so Rod. great. Rod! <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just got carried away, I guess. I, I guess I just have too much enthusiasm. <laughs> But when you got talent, you gotta have enthusiasm to go with it, right, Danny? Yeah, you, you sure do. I, I mean, a guy's gotta believe in himself or he's nothing, right? Right. He's nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, like like Liz says, let's let's just forget about it and relax, huh? This this is a social occasion and not a business meeting. <laughs> well, how you been, Danny? Pretty good, working hard. Mm, well, you wouldn't be where you are if you didn't. And believe me, the greatest have to work the hardest, and you are the greatest. Yeah. Hey, can't I get somebody a drink? Since I seem to be the only hostess available. <laughs> I could go for a stiff shot of ginger ale, Liz. Okay, how about you, Danny? Nothing for me, thanks. How about a drink for you, Rod? Hey, I don't need any artificial stimulation. Not when I'm sitting face to face with the great Danny Williams. How you taking me, straight or diluted with a little club soda? <laughs> straight or a little? Is he fast? Is he quick on the draw? Oh. You know, it's easy to see that you're not one of those comics that just depends on his writers. That's why this material I got for you is so natural, Danny. Really, with a little added touches, you can fracture the people, especially with your machine gun delivery. Oh, wait a minute. To begin with, I don't have a machine gun delivery. No, it's more like a leaky water pistol. <laughs> <laughs> 
think this change of pace will do you good. You know, these sock two-line jokes are just great. Well, I, I don't do that kind of material. I do more basic stuff. My stuff has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You're talking about the, the real fast patter. I mean, a fellow like, like Al Jacobs over at the Century Club. He'd oh, be... he's not in your league, Danny. Believe me, you'll change your mind when you see the material. Rod, right. please. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I did it again. <laughs> I, I just... I just keep forgetting this is a social occasion. <laughs> well, you, uh, you play golf? Oh, I love it. Love it. How about a game over the weekend? No, I won't be playing for quite some time yet. I, uh, still nursing a bum ankle. Oh, yeah. Benny's a golfer, though. Yes. Have Mashie. We'll travel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, swell. Well, I don't know, Benny. I, I may be out of town over the weekend. I'll, I'll give you a call. No, thank you. Say, why don't we get this conversation on the romantic plane where it belongs? Uh, how'd you meet Liz? Well, Bill Connolly introduced us. Huh? He's a guy I used to know when I was a disc jockey in Marietta, Ohio. <laughs> That's before I got in this rat race of writing comedy. Boy, is it tough getting started. You really need a lot of nerve, you know it? Bet you do. You know, you've got no idea what you have to go through just to get to the right people. What do you have to go through, Rod? <laughs> what? Things like pretending to fall for old maid press agents. Hey, how about that, huh? Well, we're sitting here talking, little Liz has been getting quietly loaded. I've never been more sober in my life. Will you please go? Hey, now, wait a minute, honey. You Call me honey once more, and I won't be responsible for what I do. Well, Liz, just I a think minute. I better go. Okay. I'll see you around, Liz. Hey, uh, where'd you say this Al Jacobs is working? Look it up in Variety. I'll see ya. Well, how you like that? Isn't even 12 o'clock and my coach has turned into a pumpkin already. No, don't let that guy disturb you. He's just a first-class jerk. He's not even first-class. Could I ever fallen for anybody like that? What's the matter with me? There's nothing the matter with you, Liz. Of course not. It could happen to any girl. Oh, no, it couldn't. It only happened to a girl who wanted romance so badly. She went all to pieces over the first guy that bought her a cheap bunch of flowers and <coughs> held her hand in the movies. Oh, Liz, wait a minute, honey. Well, it's pretty funny when you think of it. Don't look so sad. I've got a sense of humor, you know. I can go along with a gag. You don't have to be afraid to laugh. What's there to laugh about? There's plenty to laugh about. Can't you see it? Don't you know a big joke when you see it? Will you please tell her I called? Thank you. You still can't get her? That's the fifth time. She's just not answering her phone. Oh, poor Aunt Liz. Gee, I wish we could find her a real nice fellow so she'd forget all about that awful man. Yeah. They don't sell a do-it-yourself kit, honey, that makes them. <laughs> I know, Daddy, but there must be hundreds of real nice guys we could introduce her to. We haven't got time to discuss that now, dear. You're going to be late for school. Oh, Daddy, can I have a dime? I've got to stop off at the newsstand and pay Mr. Shermerhorn for my comic book. You know something? If you read your geography as much as you read comic books, you'd be another Christopher Columbus. <laughs> He'd be perfect for Aunt Liz. Christopher Columbus? <laughs> no. Mr. Shermerhorn. Oh. He's all alone in the world, and he's such a sweet man. Boy, we could invite him up here to have dinner with Aunt Liz. Yeah, then he'd marry her, and we wouldn't have to pay for our comic books. <laughs> now, both of you, stop being silly. We have no right to interfere in Aunt Liz's private affairs. She's a full-grown woman, leading her own life. And I'm sure she'd resent anybody trying to lead it for her. I don't want to hear any more about it. Remember what I told you. Just butt out. Mind your own business. You should never, ever interfere in the private affairs of others. Ever. Hello, Pat. Danny Williams. Hey, remember last week you told me about your cousin who was looking for a girlfriend? <laughs> You were in a 
crap game with the British ambassador and you won his clothes. <laughs> Nothing brings out the crude humor of the lower classes like the sight of a well-groomed gentleman. A thousand apologies, your lordship. But Halloween has passed. What are you made up for? <laughs> has Elizabeth arrived yet? Elizabeth? You mean Liz? No. I don't think she will be arriving. I can't even get her to answer her phone. Well, I did. She promised to meet me here. You're meeting Liz here? For what? Well, I'll tell you, Danny. When I left here last night, I had a long talk with myself. Something I do when I feel the need of witty conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I made a decision. You decided to have your head examined. <laughs> no, I decided Alyssa's ego suffered a terrible wound that can only be soothed by the attentions of some charming gentleman. <laughs> Thus thou mean you? <laughs> Why not? It'll make her feel like a woman again. It's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of in my whole life. In the first place, we should not interfere in her personal affairs. And in the second place, I've already got a man for her. <laughs> you do who? Pat Winkler's cousin from Pittsburgh, the accountant. Liz couldn't fall for an accountant. She needs a devil-may-care charm of an actor. <laughs> How they let me remain single this long, I'll never know. <laughs> ah, Juliet, where for art thou, oh, Juliet? <laughs> Look, Plasmore, do me a favor, get out of here. The doorbell is ringing, old boy. I know, that must be the fella from Pittsburgh. Now, whatever you do, don't mess this up, will you? Oh, Liz. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My, he looks natural. When did he die? <laughs> Brain passed away quite some time ago, but the rest of them doesn't know about it yet. Elizabeth, dear, this is for you. For me? What's the gag? Well, Liz, sometimes it's possible to be close to a person for years and yet never really see her. You mean you need glasses? <laughs> well, you're toying with my heart. Oh, Benny, are you trying to tell me that you suddenly realized you're in love with me? Oh, then you do. You read it in my eyes. <laughs> I don't expect you to return my feelings, Liz. All I want is a chance to be near you and get you acquainted with the real me. I want to take you inside the clown and introduce you to the man. Now, you know that's no place to take a lady. <laughs> <laughs> if you had any delicacy at all, you'd leave us. Benny, I love you dearly. And usually I can go along with a gag as well as anybody, but... Well, there's one subject on which I've just lost my sense of humor. Let's consider my love life a closed book, huh? I don't want to hear any more about it. Yeah, yeah that's what I was telling them, honey. I said, I said, uh, we, we should just mind our own business. After all, this is Liz's private life, and we should butt out. <laughs> I thought I heard the doorbell. Anyhow, I did hear the doorbell. Here I am, where is she? I, I beg your pardon? I'm John Samish, from oh. Pittsburgh. You know, the accountant. Oh, the accountant. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I did order an accountant, but there's been a change in plans. <laughs> Benny, why don't you drop Mr. Samish off on your way home? But he lives in Pittsburgh. So you'll go out of your way a little. <laughs> you don't understand. My cousin told... Why, oh, I, I take it this is the young lady. No, that's no young lady. That's Liz. <laughs> oh, it was nice seeing you, Mr. Samish. Oh. Miss O'Neill, I realize a woman expects a build-up at a time like this, but time to me is valuable. I always say time is money. Yes, he always says that. Well, goodbye, John. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, John. you said, huh? Don't butt in. Mr. Samish, would you mind telling me for exactly what purpose Mr. Williams invited you here tonight? Mercy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Mr. Shermerhorn. This is Aunt Liz, Mr. 
sure I'm Rahorn? Isn't she nice and tall? <laughs> Mr. Shermerhorn is in business for himself. He's the most eligible bachelor in the neighborhood. He brought you a box of candy. Two pounds. I suggested a five pound box, but he didn't want to spend that much. All the women in the neighborhood are just crazy about Mr. Shermerhorn, aren't they, Mr. Shermerhorn? Come on, talk to her, Mr. Shermerhorn. With a boyfriend like him, you'd always be loaded with ice cream. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Uh, I, I didn't want to come, but <laughs> uh, they insisted. Uh, trying to take their magazine business elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know how kids are. Yeah, I know how kids are. Kids of all ages, don't I, Danny? There it is. Think of the free comic books. All right, that's enough, all of you. Now, stop it. Gentlemen, we, we owe you an apology. Mr. Samish, I had no right to ask you to come here, and, and I'm sorry that, that I inconvenienced you this way. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind except for the time. And as I always say, time is money. You do always say that, don't you? <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Shermanhorn, uh, I don't know what to say. Oh, I... you don't have to apologize to me, Mr. Williams. I wouldn't have come, but the kids begged me. Yeah, it was real nice of you. That's all right. Well, in as much as that's a dead issue, I'll say good night. I'll go with you. I'll drop you off on my way to Pittsburgh. That won't be necessary. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Well, we sure messed ourselves up a bit, didn't we? Liz, I don't know what to say, honey, except we owe you an apology. For what? For what? We embarrassed you. Interfered in your private affairs? That's not all you did. What else did we do? You saved my life. Hmm? When that dope Rod Fowler walked out of here the other night, gee, I thought I'd just hit bottom. I never felt so unwanted, you know, so alone. But now you've shown me how wrong I was. Gee, I always did want to feel a part of this family. And now tonight I do. With a family like this, well, gee, I can take my time finding a boyfriend. Oh, Hello, oh, Russ. <laughs> well, it's about time you showed up. We're supposed to be rehearsing an hour ago. Oh, Danny, don't pick on me, please. I have a broken heart. You have a broken heart? From what? Well, I met this girl yesterday. It was love at first sight. But the minute I told her I was your accompanist, she said you were a favorite performer, would love to meet you. <laughs> so? So just like it turned out with Liz, my big romance turned out to be a female Rod Fowler. Rod Fowler? She was just using me so she could meet you and further her career. Holy Toledo, this is gonna be an epidemic. What does the girl do? Sing or dance or what? She sells millinery in Orbach's. <laughs> then I'm in show business. I don't know anything about hats. I couldn't further her career. Gee, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? I better phone her before she makes another date. <laughs>